So, uh, as some of you who uh, follow Tim Pool may know, he's been predicting for a while that we're heading towards a uh, some kind of a civil war, and of course not a civil war in the sense of the American Civil War, uh, you know, a civil war in the sense that uh, other countries have had to where you have a lot of uh, domestic unrest and um, people committing acts of violence against each other for political reasons uh, until there is some kind of a resolution or one side wins out and one side loses and the other folks are crushed and essentially it brings apart, uh, uh, you know, about some kind of new uh, political order in the country. And while I think he's still very far ahead of the curve on that one, I do see a path for where his scenario could work out. Um, a couple months ago, I made a video called um, I, something like Banning the AR-15 Would Lead to Civil War, uh, which I think is a, still a, an accurate video, and uh, you should watch it if you're interested. But I wanted to update that a bit and see it uh, and find a, a path uh, to which I think uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Poole's scenario could play out. Uh, so essentially, uh, Tim's Tim's thesis is that uh, you know there's there's increasing uh, division uh, in the country, and we're getting to the point to where people cannot settle their differences, you know, through uh, you know simply electoral means, and uh, folks will have to resort to violence uh, because the political process is not able to actually um, sort of sort out their differences and uh, s and settle people's uh, various interests. And so where I think the uh, political process has broken down the most into where uh, it really is um, non-functioning is on the issue of guns. There's a very clear divide in this country. There are people in this country who like guns uh, and who think it is a, uh, an important part of American culture uh, and a, an important tradition and a guard against uh, you know, government tyranny. And then there are people who think that uh, you know, civilian gun ownership is an abomination and that all the cops – uh, essentially should have guns. And so because of this, I think that uh, the gun issue is most likely what's going to lead uh, people to have to resort to violence one way or the other, uh, whether that is uh, anti-gun or pro-gun people. If there appears to be any sort of decisive victory for either side, I think you're, it's going to enrage the other side. And uh, a lot of people have been talking uh, this week because of the president's comments uh, favoring things like red flag laws and uh, and a gun registration program. Uh, people are uh, thinking that uh, the, the tide at this point is swinging in favor of the gun grabbers. And so if that uh, ends up panning out, I think that it would be a real possibility uh, that you see, uh, you know, private gun owners uh, resorting to uh, violence to defend themselves against uh, you know, government aggression when people finally come to start taking their guns. And of course, uh, the red flag law is probably not as egregious as the gun registration program because at least if, uh, under the red flag law and no gun registration, you, know, you can sort of hide the fact that you have guns. But um, it's still a very big problem if someone, you know, if you have a neighbor that doesn't like you and they know you have guns, or even if they don't know you have guns, they can say you do and say that you're a dangerous person and have the police raid your house. And that is a terrorizing, uh, that's a terrorizing fact. If you have a bad neighbor who you really don't like or who really doesn't like you, uh, that is something that they can hold over you. They can essentially have you swatted uh, at any time. And unlike with you know real swatting, uh, where you call the call in the SWAT team to a house, if you call the ATF on somebody over you know a red flag law, there is no punishment apparently for uh, egregious or uh, erroneous accusations. And so of course that um, won't be what really kicks off uh, you know civil conflict or anything. I think that things will have to get worse. That'll just be an escalation uh, in the culture war. Uh, over guns, and what will end up happening is that because Trump, you know, uh, compromised to some extent uh, with the gun grabbers and decided to, you know, do something that infringed upon uh, the Second Amendment rights of his supporters, you're going to have a lot of people in this country uh, for whom guns are, you know, one of their top three issues. Uh, you know, pretty much anyone who owns uh, a rifle in this country. Uh, since that's mostly what they're targeting. They don't seem to be too upset about handguns right now. It's mostly rifles. Uh, pretty much, you know, I would say 90% of all gun owners in this country uh, would not be interested uh, in voting uh, for Donald Trump uh, as much as they were last time. Now, there might be still pe some people who swallow uh, that pill uh, and pull the lever for Trump, but you're not going to have them passionately out campaigning for Trump like they did, and that's going to be erode his support to some extent. And he won the last election by a pretty thin margin. Uh, you know, it was only like 70,000 votes over, spread over three states that ended up winning him that election. And so without that extra um, oomph 
from uh, the gun owners in America, uh, Trump, you know, I don't think uh, will be able to win re-election. I think that that will be a fatal blow if Trump uh, comes out of his presidency or goes into you know the election uh, being someone who uh, did more for the sake of gun control than Barack Obama, which certainly would be true if he passed either the gun registry or the red flag law, uh, but neither of those are, are anything that Obama passed. Obama pretty much didn't get anything done on guns. He was great for guns. In fact, uh, Obama scared people into going out and buying lots of guns. So yeah, if Trump becomes a gun grabber president in the eyes of gun owners, uh, he's not going to win re-election. And that means that a Democrat who uh, likely will be running on some kind of a uh, an assault weapons ban with a confiscation program, because the old assault weapons ban from 92, uh, that's that's not strong enough for the for today's standards. I think they're going to want to go much further and uh, actually start taking people's guns and saying that the guns that are on the street are what the real problem is. And of course, that'll be the moment when the government crosses the Rubicon and uh, they they essentially uh, you know commit a fatal error, uh, an unforced error, something that you know people have been saying for years uh, would lead to civil conflict. And that I think would be the spark uh, when uh, gun confiscation actually starts happening. Because uh, what sort of measures? Uh, are there in place uh, amongst the civilianry uh, in the case of gun confiscation? Well, one, all of the people who would be targeted for gun confiscation are well armed. And not only that, a lot of them are organized into little cells of uh, you know militia groups spread across the country. You have your three percenters, uh, which are uh, you know of course a reference to the three percent of the American population that actually fought in the American Revolution. And then you have the uh, uh, the Oath Keepers, who are ex-police and military folks who are, you know, their whole thing is the Constitution. They want to uphold the Constitution, and so if someone tries to take away all the guns, obviously that would violate the uh, Second Amendment, and they would, you know, activate to try and uh, defend the Constitution as their uh, oath dictates. And so at that point, uh, if you try and pass any sort of major gun confiscation in this country, you're going to have armed cells uh, who are going to fight to the death uh, to obstruct uh, the government's program. And you're, so you're going to have insurgency. So if there's a massive act of insurgency against your government, there's nothing else you can call that other than a civil war. Because this is a, you know, a mass movement of people who would be challenging the authority of Washington. And th but that won't be the end of it, however. There are also uh, elected officials across this country who are very strong Second Amendment supporters. There are states uh, where the governments are very uh, pro-gun. Uh, certainly uh, your deep red states, you know, like Alabama or Mississippi, uh, would definitely be uh, places where you wouldn't uh, – the federal government would have trouble getting uh, help from the local authorities. You would essentially have a bunch of sanctuary states and sanctuary counties uh, for gun owners, uh, especially uh, when it comes to electing a local sheriff. There will be people running uh, for sheriff uh, to make their – saying, hey, I won't, I won't help the federal government take away your guns. That's going to be a winning campaign strategy for a lot of local sheriffs. And so you will have local government and these private militias uh, both essentially uh, acting in rebellion against – uh, the federal government. And I don't think this is far-fetched at all if we continue down this path, uh, because it is a fact uh, that uh, people who own guns in this country have been preparing for a long time uh, for something like uh, the federal government to come in and start taking their guns. There are actually some uh, some sadistic people uh, who have been uh, relishing uh, the thought of the government trying to take their guns so that they could uh, you know, die uh, in combat and uh, martyr themselves. Uh, as uh, sort of uh, soldiers of uh, freedom. So hopefully the president comes to his senses and we don't end up getting to that point uh, because without the uh, Republicans trying to push back against uh, the left's constant uh, erosion of uh, the, second, the right, people's right to bear arms, uh, you're going to uh, see us get to that point because it has to be a rapid escalation for folks to fight back. If you do what Trump is essentially trying to do, which is boil the frog, which is take away their rights slowly one at a time, if you had a succession of Republican presidents that passed you know, small incremental gun control like Trump wants to do right now, um, you very may, may very well take away all the guns because you do it slowly. You're going to boil that frog and you'll change the culture. But if you rapidly try and take a country that has a, a very significant gun culture and erase that, uh, well, then you're going to get uh, a violent rebellion. 
So if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and subscribing. And if you do subscribe, please do click the bell because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.